setting the exposure, the focus, framing using live view, because this is the wide angle lens. Oh, I didn't see you there. Bonjour from Paris. <laughs> I don't have a crazy French accent like that. I'm shooting the M10. I have uh, three M10 cameras with me. The entire M10 lineup from Leica. Is this the best camera you can buy for that type of money? Let's find out more about the M system and why you should get into it. I'm moving on. What's up guys? We're at the Louvre in Paris. We're gonna start doing the Leica M10 review. And I have a bad cold, so my voice is a little bit nuts. So this is a camera I purchased back in February 2018. Uh, that was a year after it came out. And to make things short, I was looking for a video system and I was leaning towards uh, either a Sony or Canon, I was you know, inching towards Sony and then I went and looked at the Sony cameras and their lenses and the 51.4 by Sony was almost as big as my 2472.8 from Nikon. I was thinking this doesn't make sense to get a mirrorless camera with bigger lens than DSLR lenses. It defeats the purpose. Ended up purchasing Leica cameras. So let's go into it, but first let's take some photos. And I just took the Leica MD out of my bag. This is the latest Leica M10. I have three cameras with me and I have a 35 Sublux on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first turn it on, uh, set my ISO to 400, running more, 5.6. I'm going to set my exposure. Now, one thing you'll notice on this camera is uh, there's no display back, which is fantastic. But I want to do a reflection of the Louvre and it's raining. These cameras are way to seal. The, the one thing it's kind of cool is I'm actually using a bubble level. I'm going low tech for this. Uh, and I'm gonna take this shot. So the trick is really to be level with the puddle. And I use the bubble level for this. And even with a display bag that flips up, I prefer to use the bubble level. I'm gonna go like this, cause I'm gonna post stuff on Instagram. It's better when it's vertical. Perfect. How is that? But essentially, what Leica has done with the M10, with the M system is, is they keep it really simple. There's no video, there's no gimmick. It's really photography. You have your aperture, your ISO, your shutter speed. You can see what your exposure is going to be like, and you just go shooting. Okay, so let's start talking about the M10, which was the first of the M10 series that was released. Uh, it's really simple. It's a simple design that keeps your control to a minimum. You got live view, play if you want to review your photos, menu, the menu system, we'll go over it later. It's really great. And you got this here, you press and you get, you see all your, your battery status, how many shots are remaining, um, your exposure, the lens you're on. And here you have your ISO, you just lift it up. It's really easy, actually. I don't know why some people go, it's so hard to do, dude. You don't need two fingers. You can push it, turn it, you're good. There's also an um, EV comp uh, in the wheel on this side. You can go plus three or minus three comp, uh, exposure variable compensation. But it's starting to rain again, and my videographer's camera is, I don't know if it's red or proof. <laughs> so we're going to move from the Louvre, and we're going to go somewhere else. It's raining again. 
let's turn this camera on. So the MD doesn't have a screen in the back, but there's an indicator when you turn it on to Wi-Fi because we're going to connect to the Leica Photos app to review some of the photos we just took at the Louvre. Do -do -do -do. Leica Photos. And now I should be able to connect. So it's connecting to the MD. Okay. So now I can review the photos I just took. So you can see your photo and the exposure is right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download it to my phone so it's repairing. So I can use it right away from my phone to post on social media, right? Because that's the name of the game. Now I'm saving the image to my phone and it's saving the raw file. No way. Yeah. And what you can do is easily, Snapseed is a free app you can use to convert your RAW file into a JPEG. You can go in. So you have your exposure, highlights, shadows. I like brightening the shadows. Uh, structure. Let's increase the structure a little bit. We'll add a little bit of contrast. And I go to export. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. You can go into the camera settings and you have your storage, how many photos you got left. Uh, and you go camera settings. Now the Leica M10D doesn't have a lot of settings. You have your drive mode, which is set to high speed, five frames a second. I'm actually going to drop this to continuous slow, which is three frames a second. You have your metering set to average, center weighted, white balance. It's really good. I leave it to auto white balance. The file format, DNG and maximum ISO on M settings, I set it to 10,000. It's really good at 10,000. And maximum auto ISO at 3,200, because I seldom use that, but if I need to use it, I'll use auto ISO. And maximum exposure time, one 500 of a second, because I want it to be, the shutter to be as fast as possible. You can use the app as a remote for the camera. So, it's pretty good, just have to focus. Let's do this. Look how beautiful this place is. Uh, oh, this is amazing. I'm going to go way back there to the shop. It's just astounding. It's so easy to use. It's so intuitive. You focus. You're dead on. You compose your photo. Look at that. And it's so quiet. We are now at Quai de la Tournelle, where we have one of the best views on Notre Dame de Paris. We just left Saint Chapelle, and we thought we'd continue here. One of the things I want to address about the Leica M10 is a lot of reviewers are talking about battery life. You can get 400, 500 photos out of one battery charge. And I found this to be false. You can get way more photos. Uh, there's a couple of tricks you need to know about the Leica M10 to get the most out of the battery life for your camera. One of them is when I'm not shooting, I turn it off. I don't let it go to sleep. Another thing is I use the fastest memory cards I can get. I can purchase and I use 128 gigs so they're not small cards but it helps clear the buffer faster so it uses less power in the battery. I usually get around a thousand to 1100 photos per charge which is a lot more than the stated four to 500 photos. I shot a wedding using three cameras and one of them was the Leica M10 and I got over 1100 photos and add about, I, th I think it was 45 or 35 percent left on my camera at the end of the day. Last Saturday, I shot over 1,200 photos with this camera in four hours. The wedding was from 8 a.m. to 1 a.m. that I shot that Leica M10. And the thing that was kind of cool is I used two other cameras, Nikon cameras were my main cameras, but I used the Leica extensively, especially when I required ISO at the reception because it's so good at ISO settings and with the Leica Summilux lenses at 1.4 it handles colors and difficult light condition uh, in a wedding reception brilliantly. You can't go wrong with it. 
Uh, one of the other things I want to talk about those cameras is, yes, they're expensive and the lenses are equally expensive. But what made me sway from Sony to Leica was the size of the lenses. Because you're talking about a mirrorless camera that actually uses small lenses. Oh man, there are girls at the spot I wanted to shoot. You can take a lot more than 400 and 500 photos. If you take only 400 and 500 photos per charge, you're doing something wrong. Well, this is a sad puddle, but I think we can do something with it. No, this is too sad. We'll do it from there. So I'm exposing for the highlights and I'll brighten up the shadows afterwards. This is perfect. I'm gonna do it from here. Oh man, this is brilliant. Okay, so we're gonna go to Place des Vosges, uh, but uh, we'll talk about the difference between the three cameras at Place des Vosges. How's that? Follow me. We are arriving at Place des Vosges, where we're gonna talk about the differences between the three current M10 cameras. So let's first talk about the M10. Now, the thing with the M10, it's a really simple camera to use, uh, and they're all the same, where the, the same setup, ISO, shutter speed, and the aperture's on the lens. The menu is really simple. It's keep down to the essential, and you have the focus speaking, on all three cameras, they're the same. I love the sound of it. I don't know if you can hear this. It's, it's a beautiful sound. Now, one of the things that, I've, that I find strange is the, the people were waiting for the M10P, which I have here with the 21 Summerlux. Now, the M10P, one of the major differences you see is cosmetic at first. You lose the red dot, and that automatically turns you into a street photography ninja. Once you have that camera in your hands, Nobody can see you. You become invisible. <laughs> no, you don't. Uh, the other thing is, unlike the M10, this one, you take a photo. Let's take a photo. This one has a touch screen, so you can review, well, did I capture what I wanted? So you can just zoom in and out. Now, there's one guy said like, oh, Leica M10P has a touch screen, and what does the touch screen do? It does amazing things. No, it doesn't. It will not make you an espresso. It will not do latte art for you, but you can zoom in to check on your photos. You can swipe left and right. It's kind of cool. Now, the other thing it offers is a digital level in camera, which is really great. And I wish it, we had it on the M10, but it's not there. And the thing is, uh, that digital level is a live server, but it's not 100% accurate. There's, there's little play in it. And with a wide angle lens, you see it more. But the other thing is, remember that sound of the M10? This one has the quietest shutter, the quietest me mechanical shutter of any camera ever made. I don't know if you can hear this. It, it's really super quiet. So those are the main differences between those two cameras. And then you get to the M10D. Let's go back into my bag. Uh, now the M10D is like the M10P where you have the script, no logo, and the quiet shutter. That quiet shutter is amazing. But it has one thing, it looks like a film camera because there's no display back. To me, this is the perfect camera. And when people say, uh, they, they compare the M10 and the M10P, and it's like, it's thinner, it's the same width as the M7. Uh, no, it's not, because you got this display back here that pops out of it. This, in my hands, feels just like a film camera, because you don't have that thing in the back that's bothersome, but it's really easy to use. Now, this would have saved me 220 euros on both my cameras if this was out first, but it's just two position, close, open, and there you go, there's your thumb rest. This is, this thumb rest, this Leica thumb rest, it was 220 euros, it's crazy, but I love it. it. It just feels more natural in my hand. Yeah, I'm gonna go sit on a wet bench. There's even less distraction to make your photos. You got all the essential photography, and to turn it on, really, it's easy. This one, the on switch is here. Off, you see the little red dot, on, there it is. There you got no on switch, but it's right in the back. So you have three position. You have 
on and Wi-Fi so you can connect to the Leica Photos app. But to turn on, it's really easy. You just use your thumb and boom, you're on. And the lever for the, for the ISO is the same. You can just pop it up. And it's really easy to pop up. You can do it with one finger. Hey, hey, people need to drink more milk. Those who have yours and go like, you need two hands to drink more milk. That's all I'm saying, because you need, it's really easy, man. It's just like, oh, all of a sudden it's difficult, but it's really easy to adjust. Now, all my three cameras are set up the same. And I mean by this, you have, uh, my auto ISO, which I seldom use, is set to maximum 3200. Uh, and also, the M manual, you can set to any value you want. I set it to 10,000 ISO. This is the maximum I'll use. But the lenses, you gotta think about the lenses. I keep coming back to the lenses because it's what sold me to the Leica system. I mean, let's face it. Uh, let, let's go look at, at one of those lenses. I'm gonna put this camera here. And now I'm going to look like a clown with three cameras over my shoulders. But for the sake of this review, let's do it. Uh, this lens is out of brass. It's really heavy. It's solid. It's a solid piece of glass. There is no electronics in it. So your camera, when you look at your raw files and you look at the data at the end of the day, you have an approximation with the latest firmware from Leica that tells you, well, this is the approximate aperture you use on your lens based on the camera reading. But it's oftentimes wrong because I shoot a lot in 5.6 and it will tell me f1.4, f4. And I know it's wrong, but I remember and I don't always remember, but it's not important. What's important to me is the type of photos you can make with those cameras. Now, one of the things that I like doing in all those three cameras is I all have the little uh, screw in soft touch release because the shutter is like this and you can screw in a uh, cable release. It's kind of cool, and when you put in your bag without this and you leave it on, it won't take a thousand photos because that has happened often. They are small. That 51.4 is one of the sharpest 1.4 out there. Uh, you can look reviews on 1.4. That 35 1.4 uh, is crazy sharp, and look how tiny it is. This is a Summilux f1.4 35 mil lens. Of course, there's no electronics, there's no autofocus. Uh, I know I'm going to get flamed on YouTube with the comments about my review of the Leica cameras. But those are the main difference. I mean, one doesn't have the touch screen, has a louder shutter. No cars. Okay. Uh, you don't need the screen. You go, you make your photos, like back in the film days. Look, I'm about to be 50. When I started photography, I was shooting film. I shot the M3, I shot the M2, I shot an M6. But when I was shooting film, I was shooting Canon cameras, the S, uh, SLR camera, not digital. But I don't need, and this to me is the perfect camera. It, it keeps it to the essential about photography. You don't need the touch screen. It's perfect the way it is. And you have the same thing on all cameras where you have this little button here that you can program. Well, you cannot program it, but this will give you focus peaking. So when you use the Visiflex with this, this is the purpose of using this camera because it turns it into kind of a mirrorless digital camera, but you can focus peak with it, but I have it set to automatic. So as soon as I start turning the focus, it just zooms in the photo and then you have your focus peaking with the highlights and everything. It's, it's brilliant. Both cameras are great. Uh, one has a quieter shutter. Well, two of them, two or the three models that have a quieter shutter. Uh, one has a touch screen. One doesn't even have a screen. If I could live with one camera, one lens, I'd take this with a 21 Summilux, a little old school 21 viewfinder. But you get to, to bring out all those details and you keep all the details in the highlights that you see through the window and you get to see the details of the inside of the subway in one exposure. I don't like HDR. I don't get why people would like HDR. There's a purpose for it. But why do you want to shoot multiple photos to get exposure in different areas when you can get everything in one file. I don't know, it just makes more sense to me. One photo, you're done. Now, I started the premise about, is this the best camera you can buy for that kind of money? No, but let me qualify this because this is definitely the better camera you can buy for this kind of money. And there are many reasons for this. Uh, the main one, for me at least, is that with any other types of camera, and I've shot phase one, 
I've shot Asselblad with those big medium format digital back, uh, Nikon, uh, D3, D4, D850 now, uh, D750. I shot, I shot a lot of Nikon cameras. I shot the medium format cameras. What those cameras require, like the Canon, uh, the Fuji cameras, they require post-process to get the colors you want, to get what you want. So this means time in the digital darkroom. I don't need as much time in the digital darkroom with the Leica camera, so it is a better camera. You pay a premium for it, but it saves you time. Uh, you can always earn more money. You can never earn more time. So the thing that really sold me on the Leica system it's a mirrorless camera. And I'm going to go back to the MD here, because this one has a 21 mil on it. It's the size of the lens. When I look at different uh, providers of digital camera, this is a 35 1.4. It's got the extended lens hood on it. It's really tiny. It's 35 1.4. I look at the equivalent. The same thing with the 50 1.4, which I have in the bag on the M10. There are small lenses. They're manual focus, there's no autofocus, but you can easily zone focus, point and shoot, you're done. But did you, I mean, mirrorless camera, you get a smaller, they make smaller cameras with lenses that are just as big or bigger than the DSLR equivalent. In which world does this make any sense? Now, the thing is, me as a photographer, I find the focal length that matches my vision and my client's vision and you need maximum two, three lenses. Most Leica sh shooters I know have two or three lenses and they do 98% of their work with one lens. Uh, that's the focal length you see the world in. That's what you're good at. That's what you, you can just make a great photos without thinking too much about it. And I was looking at reviews, Leica, Sony, Fuji, Canon, and man, I can take two buddies with me and 10 lenses and it doesn't weigh more than what I had before. Uh, that's crazy. In which world do you need 10 lenses to do your work in? I want video. This doesn't do video. But for photography, there's nothing that beats the M camera. The color rendition is unmatched. Uh, the size, the form factor. Do you need a screen in the back? It's nice to have, and I have it on the other camera. This camera is on loan by Leica Camera France. I gotta give it back to them. The Summerlux 21 is on loan by the Leica Academy. I gotta give it back to them. I'm really heartbroken about this. I will buy both of those things, but it's a question of, dude, this makes sense to me as a tool to make photos, like no other camera. They keep it simple, you have all your controls here, you don't need anything else. The menu is easy to navigate, it's easy to use. Everything is super intuitive. And the battery, I mean, who needs a battery that you're gonna take 3,000 photos in a day with? How many photos do you take? Even a wedding, I don't shoot 3,000 photos. This was difficult to shoot this video. This is my first uh, camera review. My first vlog, really, because it's kind of a vlog and I want to start a vlog. So please subscribe, hit the bell, uh, follow me on Instagram, comment, ask any question you want about photography, about Leica cameras. Uh, I'm going to do a second review, the review I didn't want to make, which was sitting, well, it's not a review, I'm going to talk about the cameras. Sitting on a desk, being a talking head, talking about the cameras, I'll do that. We just winged this, but we went to a different location to make it interesting, kind of like a James Bond production. Those movies are great because you go to different locations. It's a lot of work, so maybe I should do like unbox therapy, sit behind a desk and go like, oh, this is, this is easy. I'm sure his job is not easy. Vlogging is a lot of work. I thought photography was easy, but post-process is a lot of work. Yeah, so talk about post-process. This is, this is easy. Take your photo, expose it right, and you're done. I'll see you. Maybe not with the romantic French accent from Paris, uh, but I will see you soon on the vlog. Subscribe. Like, comment, and Wait. follow on Instagram. Bye bye. Wait, like, like, comment, and follow me on Instagram. Bye.
I'm moving on Oh man, this is such a great spot. I mean, we should do a Lake Al review from here. <laughs> oh wait, Lake Al already did this with Thomas, the Lake IMD, which reminds me, I do have a Lake IMD.